Hey guys, welcome to AI with AI. This side, Asif Imnath. This video is going to be really exciting. We're going to talk about what are the different types of naive base classifier that we can use while deploying our machine learning models. Okay. And what are the pros and cons of naive base classifier? In which scenarios we should use naive base and in which scenarios we should not use naive base. This is what the machine learning engineers should understand. First of all, let me name types of naive base classifier. There are three types of naive base classifier. First one is Gaussian naive base. Second one is multinomial naive base. Third one is Bernoulli's naive base. Okay. The important here is to understand which one you should use when. There are three types of naive base classifier. Which one you should use based on the given data set. That is what is really important for us to understand okay so gaussian naive base is used when the features are assumed to be gaussian features meaning the input the data the data set which is given is gaussian multinomial naive bias is used when the values given the features given are discrete what do you mean by discrete we will understand be with me what is bernoulli's naive base when we should think of using bernoulli's naive base bernoulli's naive base should be considered using when the input, the features given are binary. When you want to predict the two classes, yes or no, true or false, when the predicted features are of Boolean type, then we can think of using Bernoulli's naive base. So understanding Bernoulli's naive base is very easy. When you want Boolean values, Boolean features, true or false, yes or no, then Bernoulli's naive base. When you want multinomial, meaning multiple discrete values, multiple discrete values, we will understand what does it mean. And when you have the features Gaussian, the continuous value are assumed to be discrete, then we can think of using Gaussian. Let's understand what do you mean by discrete first, okay? But before I proceed, if you have not watched our previous video on naive base classifier, what is naive base classifier and how it predicts the future, how it classifies the data, then go and watch. I'll keep the link in the i button and in the description below. So what do you mean by discrete values? Discrete data typically involves counting rather than measuring even if a computer or machine is doing the counting. So just to give you a simple example, this can be any number. It, it is not a measurement. Okay. So you can say the average number of push-ups you did last week was 15 per day. Does it have any relation with other data? No, right? So this is just a count. This is just a number. Okay. Meanwhile, the number of push-ups is a whole and round number and cannot be broken down into the smaller parts. That is why we are calling it as discrete data. Some more examples, let's say customers visiting shopping mall and customers who bought different items. The number doesn't have any relation. It is just a number and it is a whole number. The number of items you buy at a grocery store each week, right? It is just a number and it is not a major. We are not measuring this value. Okay. It is just a discrete. It is not continuous value. We know what is continuous value, but we'll still understand what is continuous data. I hope discrete data is clear. Continuous data is typically fluctuating number between two pre-assumed points, right? In simple words, when we plot the data and when we connect, in short, if we plot the data, we may get the continuous line. We may get the line passing through the data, right? And we may get the data linear. So that is what the continuous data stands for. Let's say, for example, weight of a newborn babies or the period of month, the weight of newborn babies will start increasing, right? Or you can say the daily wind speed or the temperature in the particular region at different time intervals, right? So this is continuous data changes over the time have different values at different time intervals, isn't it? So that is why we're calling it as continuous data. I hope now you understand the difference between discrete data and continuous data, right? So all I want to say here, when the data given is discrete data, you can think of using Gaussian naive base or multinomial naive base. Think of using multiple naive base when you have multiple classes to be predicted. You know, naive base algorithm has some assumptions and it is one of the most important interview question. What is naive base? And what are the assumptions that naive base classifier makes? The assumption that naive base classifier makes each feature makes an independent and equal contribution to the outcome. What does this mean? The features, I mean the inputs which are given, they are independent. They're not considered as dependent on each other. Independently, they will predict the Y, they, they will predict the output. 
and the weightage to the inputs given is equal. They are not biased based on the importance of a specific feature. Let's understand what do you mean by independent feature means and what do you mean by equal weightage meaning, okay? So independent feature means we assume that no pair of features are dependent. Let's say for example, in the previous video, we have seen an example of training data set, right? Given outlook, temperature and humidity, whether a person play or will not play a tennis. So if you consider here, the temperature is hot, has nothing to do with humidity. Let's say three different columns are given say temperature is hot humidity is normal and the outlook is rainy so do you think temperature hot has any relation with the outlook rainy in reality it may have but naive base classifier doesn't consider them as connected doesn't consider them as dependent okay humidity has nothing to do with outlook rainy temperature hot has nothing to do with outlook rainy even or a vice versa so every time when naive base calculates the predictions, it will consider features independently. It will not think that temperature has any dependence on the outlook or any dependence on the humidity. Okay, the output calculated is completely independent based on the specific input. Now, what do you mean by equal weightage? Equal contribution to the outcome means each feature is given the same weight or the importance. Meaning it will not consider that temperature hot has more weightage or outlook rainy has less weightage, right? Knowing only temperature and humidity alone cannot predict the outcome accurately. None of the attribute is irrelevant and assumed to be contributing equally to the outcome. In simple words, naive base consider that all features has equal weightage, meaning temperature is also important humidity is also important or outlook is also important so alone temperature cannot predict the outcome separately or accurately right so it considers all the inputs temperature humidity and outlook independently and gives the equal contribution gives the equal weightage and then calculates the outcome i hope you understand this this is really important guys comment below if you understood this and if you have any questions on it now let's see what are the pros and cons of naive base. This will help us to understand when we should use naive base and when we should not use naive base. Meaning what are the applications of naive base classifier. So the advantages of naive base classifiers are naive base is one of the fast and easy machine learning algorithm to predict the class of data set. So that is why it is most famous. It is very fast and very easy to use because it just does the mathematics and it works on the probability. Right, so that is why it is really fast. It can be used for binary as well as multi-class classification. We already know about it. It performs well in multi-class predictions as compared to the other algorithm. Generally, naive base classifier is preferred when you have multi-class prediction. Right, when you have more than two classes to be predicted, then people think of using naive base classifier. And the most popular choice of using naive base is when you want to do the text classification, right? So by looking at the advantages, you can easily assume what all will be the applications of naive base classifier, right? One of the advantages naive base is fast and easy algorithm, right? So naive base algorithm can be preferred over other classification machine learning algorithms like logistic regression, SVM, decision tree, so on and so forth. Because naive base is fast and easy and it can be used in real time applications. In real time applications meaning when you want to do the predictions on the live data on real time at run time and where you want the predictions immediately. This is where naive base is preferred because it is fast and easy. And the most popular application of naive base algorithm is text classification like classifying if email is spam or not spam or identifying or you can simply say looking at the data and identifying what type of email it is. Is it a primary? Is it a social? Is it not so important? Is it a spam? So you see different categories of emails nowadays, right? So how does this classifies the email? It is based on text classification, right? Where it reads the data and where we need multi-class classification. Similarly, the naive base classifier can be used in the article classification. Let's say you give some news article to the naive base classifier and naive base classifier can easily identify what is this article is all about. Is it the article related to food? Is it the article related to sports? Is the article related to politics? And based on the insights it has got, it can classify the articles in different classes. That is multi-class classifier. This is where multinomial naive base that is type 2 will come into a picture. 
where else naive base can be used naive base can also be used in recommendation systems where you want to understand the sentiments of customers sentiment analysis is one of the most popular application of machine learning we are all using facebook twitter instagram whatsapp Google Play so we keep interacting with these applications we do likes we comment we provide some reviews so based on the reviews that you have provided so based on the type of data that you have liked the machine learning understand the sentiments you like or what you don't like what is your sentiment are you angry are you happy what is your mood and based on that it can also show you the ads this is where naive base classifier can be heavily used amazing right so these are all advantages of naive base classifier what are the disadvantages of naive base classifier in the start of the discussion i told you naive base assumes that all the features are independent and equal weightage will be given to all the features and this is where the disadvantages of naive base classifier also comes into a picture because in reality the features will be dependent and that is why we are considering these columns right they are related to each other i mean there is some correlation between the features and it has some impact on the output so considering independent features independent columns and calculating the output is not so good idea so in short you can say if there is high dependency of features then naive base is not a good classifier to choose a uh, one more disadvantage of naive base classifier that i can give let's say we have a cancer data set we have plotted the data something like this age versus tumor we have harmless and harmful right we have considered this data sets already in some of our previous videos we have already used heart disease data set iris data set cancer data set on different machine learning algorithms for now you can say that there is a cancer data set we have a patients having harmful and harmless tumors but in reality out of millions of tests that we have made there will be approximately hundreds of people having harmful tumor all i want to say here is data is imbalanced where we have millions of harmless tumor in the test data set and where we have only hundreds of harmful tumor right so data is not balanced right so data is biased data is imbalanced and in such data sets naive base cannot be considered as a good classifier and question may come why we cannot use it because what naive base does naive base just does the calculations it just does the mathematics it just calculates the probability and likelihood right so it is a probabilistic model that is why it is doing a mathematics and probability will be always higher on the harmless tumors and hence it may not give you the good accuracy that is why don't use naive base classifier in biased data set amazing amazing and that's how we come to an end of this discussion i hope you understood when to use naive base and when we should not use naive base pros and cons of naive base algorithm and types of naive base algorithm make sure you like and subscribe and also put down your thoughts in the comments every like and comment motivates me to create more and more videos okay so that's it for this video see you in the next video thank you bye bye